The purpose of this video is to propose a paradox-based method that will increase the odds of unraveling intricate math contest problems. By the end of this video, you will have added one more effective idea in your personal toolkit to use next time you will deal with some tough international mathematical olympiads or putnam problem. To get my idea across and before I illustrate the procedure, I have to first introduce an important concept which is tightly connected with the way our brain works and then I have to show you precise examples of what a paradox is. To understand how to apply the method, I need to first talk about how our brain works, which gives the opportunity to introduce the first important idea, the fractionation. Pick up a jelly pot and pour onto its surface one drop of hot water at a time. As the number of drops increases, the depression produced by the end becomes shallower. This is basically the same we observe when we taste a nice piece of jelly. If we repeat the experiment several times, pouring hot water off from different positions, we eventually obtain a pot characterized by many depressions and ridges. This fact implies that all the incoming drops of water will move through that particular ridge located in correspondence with the initial spoon's position. In other words, the jelly surface has provided an environment that helps water to self-organizing through different ridges. Our brain behaves in a similar way. If you replace the drops of hot water with the pieces of information such as a function, a theorem, or a concept, the jelly surface with our working memory, which is a cognitive system we use to connect all the pieces of information and relationships online when we think through a problem, then the jelly metaphor explains that our brain provides an environment for facilitating the self-organization of the information into patterns. This implies that whenever we seek to solve a mathematical problem, we will naturally use the most familiar preset pattern, depending on which part of the problem we have decided to attend to. This is a powerful way by which we make sense of the information quickly. However, it comes at the expense of creativity because we tend to rely always on the most familiar pattern, while creativity requires finding different ways of restructuring these patterns to see things differently. To understand the negative aspect of these preset patterns, consider the following L-shaped picture. Your task is to divide it into four equal pieces having the same area and shape. As you try to solve this challenge, your working memory will attend to that information that more closely matches the most familiar pattern form in the past by your brain. As you notice, it is very difficult to find these four equal pieces starting from this picture. Common first solution involves dividing the shape as follows, and we usually end up playing with all the possible sets of divisions. We need to restructure the initial information through fractionation of the information. So, divide the original picture into 12 squares. Can you spot the four pieces? This is the final solution. In the field of mathematical problem solving, fractionating a problem space into its atomic parts involves identifying a set of mathematical objects, theorems, principles, features or properties that are relevant to that mathematical area or even outside of it. So, let's jump into the second idea. What do I actually mean by paradox? The New Oxford American Dictionary gives the following definition of paradox. A statement or a proposition that despite sound or apparently sound, reasoning from acceptable premises leads to a conclusion that seems senseless, logically unacceptable, or self-contradictory. A famous example of paradox showing this self-contradictory element is the liar paradox, which comes about across the centuries under different forms. The first, which was stated by the Cretan Epimenides of Knossos, comes from stating, all Cretans are liars. The second one, which was formulated by Bertrand Russell, is represented by the barber's paradox. The barber is the one who shaves all those and those only who do not shave themselves. The question is, does the barber shave himself? Both statements lead to the same type of paradoxes. In the first case, the contradiction is, the statement must be true and false simultaneously. I leave it as an exercise the task of figuring out why so. In the second case, the contradiction is that the barber must shave himself and not shave simultaneously. Seeking out paradoxes is at the very foundation of creative thinking because paradoxes, as history teaches, stimulate a refoundation of the areas of knowledge that consciously or unconsciously are based upon it. 
So now that we are more comfortable with these two fundamentals, let's see how to use them to solve a problem that was posed as part of the Putnam mathematical competition in 1990. Let t0 equal to 2, t1 equal to 3, t2 equal to 6 for n equal or bigger than 3, and btn a formula of the type shown in the picture. The first few terms are 2, 3, 6, 14, 40, and so on. You can do the math on your own. The question is, can you find a formula for tn of the form tn equal an plus bn, where an and bn are well-known sequences? Step number one, identify the paradox. We base our line of reasoning upon the following assumption. The well-known sequences an and bn are the sequence that produces the first three terms t0, t1, and t2, and the sequence producing tn for n equal or bigger than 3. How might these two sequences coexist? This is possible if for n smaller than 3, an is different from 0 and bn is equal to 0. And if for n equal or bigger than 3, an is equal to 0 and bn is different from 0. Therefore, we found a paradox. Both sequences an and bn must be 0 and different from 0 simultaneously. In other words, the state 1 must hold to satisfy the condition n smaller than 3, and the state 2 must hold to satisfy the other requirement. How do we disentangle this paradox? We use the fractionation technique. This leads us to the second step, fractionate the problem space. Fractionating the problem space involves finding a mathematical object or a theorem, a principle, a feature, or a property using your knowledge a book or a Wikipedia and formulating a statement at the time as follows. A real valued function makes a n equal to zero and bn different from zero when n is equal or bigger than three, but a n different from zero and bn equal to zero when n is smaller than three. And then again, the continuity of a real valued function makes a n equal to zero and bn different from zero when n is equal or bigger than three, but an different from 0 and bn equal to 0 when n is smaller than 3. And then again, the function's derivative. And then again, the function's integral. And then again, the limit of a function makes an equal to 0 and so on and so on. Keep on applying this approach as long as you come up with some valuable idea. It turns out that a very useful mathematical object that satisfies the contradictory requirements associated with the two conditions is the conica delta, which is defined as this, and that takes on the value 1 as i is different from j and 0 for i equal to j. The last step involves solving the paradox using the new insight we gain through the fractionation of the problem space. When you solve a problem, think in terms of the ideal result and then proceed backward. Let's apply it. Our delta associated with a n must be 1 and 0 when n is smaller than 3, and when it is equal or bigger than 3. Let's call this delta, delta a n. Our delta associated with b n must be 0 and 1 when n is smaller than 3, and when it is equal or bigger than 3. Let's call this delta, delta b n. Our delta must be delta a n and delta bn. This requires to arrange these delta's indices in relation to the opposite conditions. Since the requirements to be delta n and delta bn must coexist under two different conditions, then chances are we can obtain the right deltas. To figure out how to arrange the indices, build a matrix and get your hands dirty to inspect how a mathematical object behaves. This tactic makes wonders when you solve mathematical problems. The indices we choose to have 1 and 0 when n spans between 0 and 4 are this. Again, proceeding backward, how might we carry this through? The, the answer, using a summation, which leads us to this expression. To produce the final sequence 2, 3, 6, 14, etc., we will use the final following complete solution. So that was the story. I am very happy to have shared with you these important problem solving tactics and good luck with your next mathematical competition. Arrivederci.